day two of the national. Yesterday was great. Spoke to a lot of people, saw some cool tables, saw a lot of the madness inside. But let's see what day two brings. Come on, let's go. Okay, everybody, I am here with friend of the show, one of the OG friends of our show, Dave Ehrman from Golden. Uh, we ran into him this morning. I told you we were going to find him, and we found him. Dave, welcome. It's good to see you. Man, thanks for having me. It's yeah, great. It it's feels, great. feels like I'm back, uh, you know, like when we first, when you guys first launched and yes. I came on, you know? Yes, we're going to do a, we're, we're do, gonna do a reunion party at some point, and you okay. are the first on the list to get invited. All right. Um, so I, I want to just talk to you about, like, you have a beautiful booth. And we already did content around everything around your booth, like all Two the story great... booth, man. When it's do you see that? Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, there's <laughs> stairs right behind you that go up. It's crazy. Um, what are you doing this week? Like, what are your goals this week? What are you guys trying to highlight? Look, we're here at the National Sports Collectors Convention. This is a big convention. You know, we went to Comic Con. We had a two million dollar goal of, at Comic Con. Mm -hmm. This is the national. <laughs> we got a goal here. You know. Uh, I won't get into numbers so far. We got a long way ahead of us. Wow. Um, but you know, we, we got a ton of good stuff already in the door. Okay. It's early. You never know. Something big could come in and, and knock out half of that. Mm -hmm. Give me one Wagner. Give me one thing. You know, this is sports, you know? So there are big pieces out here. So we want a lofty goal. Last year we were right around there. So, you know, it's not impossible. Okay. We, we brought the full crew here too. I've got, yeah. I got our shoe guy. We got our comic guy. Like we, we came, we got two booths. We got a vintage booth up front displaying our vintage items. Yes. So uh, that's something that's coming up for mm -hmm. us as well. That's something big. Yeah. We're going to have a vintage sale where uh, it's 1970s and prior, hardbound catalog, descriptions written up. Joe Thomas Sulo has left memory lane. He's now with Golden. Okay. So he's uh, spearheading that project with Steve Lucas, who's been our longtime vintage expert. Yeah. I am getting up there in age. I know a thing or two about vintage. Um, I've been collecting cards a long time. I've had many Ty Cobbs, Joe Jackson's, all that. I mean, look, I got the... I got the Joe Jackson Ty Cobb Look at that. tattoo. Famous <laughs> Conlon type one. That photo's worth like a half million. It is. That, that, that's got to be a type zero. That's not even a type one. A this, tattoo's got to be a zero. His bicep's better. worth more than the Conlon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that's cool yeah so you know i mean we got two booths going you know yeah. we're just we're out here trying to get a consignment we're taking photos we're meeting fans mm -hmm. meeting young fans that watch the show yeah you know that's rewarding yeah. you know i love when a kid comes up he watches it he gets to you know like look up to us when we did the show we didn't think um about the kids as much we were like just want to get on tv promote our business have mm -hmm. fun mm -hmm. but i think you know we're giving back to the community as well so netflix the golden touch if you guys haven't heard of it uh um, king of collectibles the season two is out we've yeah. got 14 total episodes on there um but yeah it's great to see the kids and, and honestly what i love seeing mm -hmm. i've I got a guy from france come up and he's like i never knew about cards until i saw the show yeah. he's now he's the biggest breaker in France, come on, you know, so just a couple years difference, you know, like we were introducing trading cards all over the world That's with the great. show. That's I get hit up South America. We were top 10 in yeah. like 10, 15 countries. So. We did an episode like breaking down your season a couple weeks ago and right. Nick brought up that his physical trainer, his therapist said, Hey, have you heard of this uh, golden touch show? And Nick was like, okay, things have changed. If my therapist yeah. is bringing this up. So kudos to yeah, you. Yeah, like, like a couple of feedbacks I've gotten actually. So we did the show last year when we didn't really know the like, I'm looking in the supermarket. I'm not getting mobbed. Like it's not like that. Right. <laughs> but then I come to national last year and people are coming up to me going, I own a card shop in like Montana. And they're telling me once a day, someone comes in, they haven't picked up a pack of cards in decades yeah. and they're coming and buying wax from my store. So I'm like, man, we're helping out these local stores and these markets yes. in addition to the kids collecting and something interesting a lot of people don't really know what we do or the hobby mm -hmm. so a lot of the wives are watching yeah. and the guys girlfriends and they're going hey now my I wife like gets what i do <laughs> like you know so we're really starting to just look we just it's all about making the hobby mainstream yeah you know yes. if we can connect with everybody mm -hmm. growing up i couldn't talk cards with my buddies no i'd be like hey i got this new jackie no. rookie uh, the top to bowman and the, and the yeah. guys are like I don't huh? care. Like, you know, huh? yeah. Like, I was like, there was one kid in my high school yeah. that I could talk cards with. Yeah. Literally one kid. Yeah. Now I think anyone can go in. My son's baseball team, they're all ripping packs. And the, it's just cool to see, like, it's becoming popular, cool, it and is. everybody's doing it. You yeah, know? it is. And I, I want to give you guys a shout out for this particular season. 
This particular season, I think you guys did a better job because you learned season by season yeah. of highlighting how much you care about your customer, about the consigner. Sure. Like I felt like you guys did a, even a better job this year, being like, well, I, I, I got to get this guy. Like what we what we yeah. estimated we would get him. So yeah, good job there. Awesome, and I'm man. sure it's always it's always been that way. But you, the producers did a better job of. Yeah, highlighting that. Like the relationships, right? The relationships. This, this business is for yeah. us a golden. Mm -hmm. It's not like you go fill out a form on the site, you drop a card, and you cross your fingers, right? Yeah. You are talking to somebody. I'm telling you, I think this is the best strategy. We're going to do all this. I'm now invested in this with you, you know? Yeah. And if it doesn't get where you want, I'm letting you down. Like, you know, you might have wanted to spend that money on a good cause, mm -hmm. you know? So it's so much more than just getting lots of money and everybody making money. Like, I'm feeling for my customers, you know? Right. And honestly, like, if they can't sleep at night, I can't sleep at night, you know? So fortunately, fortunately, yeah. I'm able to sleep through anything. But like, yeah, it's, you know, it's a, it's a, it's exhausting. Man. It's yeah. a lot of work, you know? Yeah. And it never ends. The auctions are always live. They're breathing. They're, there's always something going on. Like, hey, the, this ending, every weekend I got an auction close, you know, it feels. So we're always on IG Live. Like, Constantly going. Yeah, now. man. You know, but it look, is. we got to do it while we do have time. You yeah. Know? It's better to be busy than to be sitting here going, where is everybody? Absolutely. Right? <laughs> Absolutely. So I don't want to keep it too long. I guess the one last thing is obviously big partnership now with eBay, yeah. right? Um, with that comes a, a different infrastructure that you now have access to. Like you mentioned the, the, the vintage focus that you're going to be focused. Like, is there, how else are you guys using eBay? Is there anything in particular that from, you know, in the future that you're going to try to do with them, any strategies you're working on that you can share. Yeah. I don't want you saying anything sensitive. But... No, absolutely. Um, yeah. And they're awesome. You yeah. know, like this is, you never know, right? When a company gets acquired and you're one of the higher ups and you're managing a team, like there's always a concern. Yeah. Are they going to keep the business the way it is? Mm -hmm. Are they going to come in and just buy it and do what they want with the brand? Sure. They love the show. Mm -hmm. They're all about the show. There might be, you know, potential in the future for eBay to be involved with the show as well. So that yeah. that's a big motivation for them and us. Yeah. We want to do as many seasons as we can. So to have them be supporting that is awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, me personally and some of the guys We've done the eBay lives. That's a new you know, okay. feature for them. Yeah. So we're not selling like a ton of product. We're just having fun with it. But I think the goal learn. would be, yeah, look, yeah. maybe down the future, yeah. we're doing eBay lives 24-7 in our, in our studio at, yes. at the office. You know, we don't know what's going to happen there. But something immediate that we're working on is eBay sells cars eBay Motors, Cars. right? Like, yeah. So we're looking in a few months to have a little section in our elite auction where we're going to have cars. Like cars owned by Michael Jordan, maybe That's car brilliant. owned by Elton John. Mm. Uh, we got a rare Trans Am. We have a Corvette. I've got a 63 Corvette with 8,000 miles under contract. Prior to this, we're like, look, we have audience and we've sold cars. Yeah. We, we sold a, you've had a few on your show. Yeah. Exactly. Well, yeah. we've had yeah. the limo jet as well, right? <laughs> the limo jet. Um, <laughs> we sold Kobe's. I think Kobe had like an El Camino or something. Yeah. Um, right after he passed, we got like 215 grand for it. So we can sell cars. We've sold Mike Trout's car. We sold the Tahoe that was gifted to Cal Ripken mm -hmm. when he broke the record for most consecutive games. Oh, nice. But now let's get into classics, right? Yeah. Like I sell celebrity cars. I just, maybe we want to have like a Barrett Jackson style live auction in the future. But the immediate goal is just to get a few more on the block. Yeah. You know, we're able to just throw it in our product base. Mm -hmm. Watches. Watches are huge. eBay's got a great selection of watches. They do. People reach out to me all the time. They've got celebrity owned. I mean, they've got six figure watches. And historically, we're not like, sure, just give it to me. We don't want to take it unless we know we're going right. to do well with it. Now we're, gates are open. We got like 15 watches ready to go for a watch category. Maybe we're going to get into jewelry at some point. You know, there's there's a lot we can do with eBay. Yeah. eBay, 130 plus million users, you know, plus Golden's Netflix series. Now when you're consigning a Golden, everybody's going to know and see your product. And if you look at the prices we've been getting, it's pretty obvious when you open the doors for everybody, prices change. And so one thing that I love and I've been telling people the most is, you always hear like, oh, well, this company does it that way. This company does it this way. And you've always seen prices of collectibles. Mm -hmm. But we don't know. Are those really the prices? Or are those just the prices that the audience that knows about them will pay? Yes. So when we open up to the world and we get all new different strategies to sell, now a $200 comic book sells for 2000 And the question is, well, is that the real price? Mm. Because maybe everyone's been doing it wrong all along. Mm -hmm. Maybe everyone needed a TV show, needs eBay's $130 million. Now we can get these... 
all this attention in the auction, we're going to just raise the bar for prices, Love man. It. And that's going to help everybody. You know? Yeah, that is. That is. It's it's like, you know, high tide raises all ships, right? Like this is going to be, this is big for you. I'm, I'm very excited to see what eBay, uh, eBay and you guys have to come. Uh, especially, I mean, yeah, I mean, the, I'm sure all of the, the product and ideas that come to you and a lot of it, to your point, you have to turn them down, but you're not going to have to turn those down anymore. So it's an exciting time for Golden. Man, really very, very exciting time for yeah. Golden, man. Yeah. And I love what you guys are doing too. Yeah. I heard the, I heard the podcast is uh, where you guys are top 10, top 100. It's, What's it's the, great. It's, it's the, the fastest growing hobby podcast in the world right now. It is just, it's incredible. Our viewership and thank you to the viewers and the audience. And yeah. we're going to try to keep bringing content like Dave and, you know, and Golden and, and everything there. So, yeah, it's been great. I love great. you guys. You guys are professional, yeah. man. I appreciate you guys having me on here. Honestly, of all the podcasts I've done, you guys took care of me and everything. Like, you know, the podcast sounded great. Mm. I was a little at first skeptical. I was like, send me a link. Guys? Let me see what yeah, it is or whatever. Guys? But, like, you guys deserve it, man. You guys, yeah. are, you guys are awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Dave. All right. Appreciate the time, man. Thank you, man. All right. Good to meet you. Sports Card Madness. Uh, we had Dave on about a year ago highlighting Golden. Mm -hmm. Our pod, And I thank him for that because our podcast, it's the fastest growing podcast okay. like in the hobby now. Okay. And we talk about you a lot. Mm -hmm. um, we just did an episode about you, uh -huh. uh, about the show a couple of weeks ago. Okay. Job well done on the second season. Thank I was you. telling Dave, I thought you guys did a much better job of highlighting like the relationships with your 100%. Husband. 100%. Yeah. You did. Yeah, well, the, uh, season one, they don't know what to expect, right? So ne Netflix owns the show, so that's what mm -hmm. people got to realize. They own the show, mm -hmm. so this, they don't know what people are going to like. But I guess in season one, when we had the French Canadian boy and we had the, you know, what he mentioned his family, yeah. the guy with the code. People like that. People like the backstory. So they were able to work, uh, work more of that in. And yes. obviously, you know, not just relationship with consigners, but a lot of times, like with me and Bond's personal relationships, people get to see that. And they're like, oh my God, that that's really Barry Bond. Yes. He's like, he's like spending hours just sitting there chatting with Ken. <laughs> so that, I, I'm so happy that I'm meeting you because that was going to be one of my questions. How, like, was your first relationship, was it Shaq? Was that like the first one way back in the day, Shaquille O'Neal? a big autograph, vintage big basketball autograph. Okay. I am. So, so yes. it was, um, well, who was it? Bond, well, the very first one, going all the way back. Mm -hmm. Again, this was not contemporary, but the very first one was uh, Pete Rose. Pete okay, Rose. Pete Rose, I met because he owned a gym in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, where I grew up. So oh. I met him when I was still in school, and he was friendly with a friend of the family. So when we, when I launched my first company, Scoreboard, way back mm -hmm. in 1986, I had him attend. Um, an event for me yeah. and to help publicize it. So he was first, but it's like, obviously Pete is 30 years old than me, 30 plus years old. Right. So it's a little different. Yeah. But um, the first one, probably the first two, like my own age mm -hmm. were Ken Griffey Jr. and Barry Bonds. And I, I look, I wish we had phone cameras back then. You know, I wish <laughs> Because in 1990, mm -hmm. I'm sitting there. I had I had had a girlfriend. I had a townhouse. I was not yet engaged, but I did marry her, my first wife. And Junior and I were on my first. You know, we had like a step down. We were sitting there playing video games while my wife was cooking up my then then to be wife was cooking us dinner and then i took him to qbc i said i said can you imagine how much people would love wow. to see a photo or like a video of me playing video games with <laughs> at that time 23 24 year old ken griffey oh, jr yeah. wait 199 was he 22 no yeah, yeah. Wait, 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 he, what, he was he was 18 in 89 so you've been 20. okay so that's right 20 yeah, yeah. Been 20 yeah so i had him and his dad on qbc and his dad did whatever, and he came to my house and played video games. That's wild. You know, and then ba and Barry also, because Barry was this, Barry was the same age, but mm -hmm. Shaq, you know, Shaq was really the first one everybody knew because he was so big in the life. But yes. Shaq, Shaq really respected what I did for him and mm -hmm. came in strong. He invited me to the draft. I was mm -hmm. there with the draft. In fact, if you look at the videos from the NBA draft, you will see me. Yeah, sitting I've with seen, his I've seen pictures. And then he, um, I was at, he hugged me after he was drafted yeah. and sitting there wearing his uh, magic cap on. That is so wild. Yep. That is wild. Um, so eBay, what are you guys doing in the future with them? If, if Whatever you can share. I mean, I was asking Dave and he was bringing up some cool things. 
things, but well, look, the, bi- the biggest thing is, look, people have always said Golden is great for the higher end stuff, but, mm-hmm. you know, may not be the place to sell something for $500, right? Yeah. The difference is, is in the future, we will still be selling those items at Golden, but they're also going to be able to be seen on eBay. So, and that's going to be the big thing More is, you've got everybody who goes to Golden mm-hmm. for look, we'll see it. Everybody goes to eBay and everybody will bid. So all the eBay customers and all the old Golden customers will be able to bid on the same item. So that is really going to, you know, drive our visibility and help consigners get better pricing. Yeah, that's great. Yep. Well, hey, congratulations. Best of luck in the future. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. It was great meeting you. Nice meeting you. All right. Thanks, Ken. Okay, we are here at the National, and this is the line to buy tickets, and we have two tickets to give away to the National today, and we found these two guys standing in line. They're both coming just for the day, so what, what's your name? Uh, Jason Smith, a.k.a. Papa Smitty. Papa Smitty? Dennis Shaw. Dennis Shaw. All right, is this your first National, guys? This is my 15th one. 15th? 16th. 16th. That's right. All right. 16th. Where are you from? From Detroit. Detroit. Framingham, Massachusetts, right outside of Boston. Love it. Yeah. Love it. All right. Well, guys, I want you to get into the show. All right. So here Thank are your tickets much. for the day. All right. Go Mahomes. Wolverines. Mahomes. That's what Go I'm Wolverines. As much Mahomes as I can get. Mahomes. Oh, what are you looking for? I'm looking for some rings for the Wolverines. Okay. Rings. Mahomes. Right. All right. That's awesome, guys. That's all you needed. Appreciate it. heritage booth right now this is the one i've been talking about all day yesterday there is some crazy stuff in here we're going to try to take you through it relatively quickly if we can so it looks like here we have a lot of cool tickets um got a ticket signed by mj we got some by larry bird magic johnson uh look at these muhammad ali joe frazier fight uh thrilla in manila uh fight very cool let's keep moving on here uh, 1974 Hank Aaron record breaking 715th home run home plate. The bases, all the bases on the field, that is legit. Every single base that was on the field during that historic moment. We have, if we see pan, pan over here, we have some kind of great um, jerseys over here. Tyler, we got balls. All right, Tyler, you have to zoom in on the bottom here. We have some Babe Ruth signed balls just amazing from the early 1930s that is wild look at here we have a mickey mantle signed ball uh home run number 515 wow very cool up top there's some joe joe dimaggio there's shohei otani balls uh just incredible all right let's keep it moving um some real vintage, vintage jerseys here. If you look, 1933, um, 1940 vintage jerseys. All right, let's keep going. We have um, Paycheck, Babe Ruth signed tic- uh, Paycheck stub. Look at that for $1,000. In 1941, I wonder what $1,000 was worth. We'll have to do the math and figure that one out. All right, let's go here. Uh, Steph Curry rookie. We have Jordan autos, patches, a lot of Otani up top. Shoot, we had 9.5 10 Beckett. That's great. The infamous Tom Brady, uh, Bowman Chrome card. And move over to this one, Tyler. Here's a lot of vintage. All right, so here's some, these are historic cards. We're looking at 1933 Gaudis, 54 Hank Aaron's. Um, this is the Mecca card right here. 
a T206 Ty Cobb. Anything T206 is just incredible. That is a five PSA. Love that. We got some Babe Ruth. We got Mickey Mantle. Tyler, if you can zoom all the way to the top, you're going to see a 1952 Mickey Mantle. I love the lighting in these. The, the lighting's perfect here too. We have some iconic actual unopened boxes here as well. Uh, the one we talk about the most, uh, Fleer, 1986 basketball. Uh, just beautiful, beautiful items in this, uh, this area. We got Bat, um, Frank Robinson, Mickey Mantle, uh, Roberto Clemente. Just incredible. Shoeless Joe Jackson Bat. Estimate at $3 million. This is a $3 million item on this middle shelf right here. That is in, that's incredible. Just incredible. All right, we got some more jerseys over here. We have comic books in the in the right corner over here. Maybe you can go get some some pics of that. We have um, looks like some type one photographs as well. So these comics are great. I mean, here's here's the goat comic right here. Superman, fantastic. That's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right, keep moving. Here's some type one photos. And we're gonna go over to this section over here. The Ninja Turtle masks. Check that out. She took away the like. So yeah, look at these. We even have Splinter the Rat. That's that's very cool. Power Rangers costumes. So cool. I'm gonna go up close here. So these costumes are from. Let's see. All right, no date on them. I wonder when these are from. It says 2024, but that's probably the auction date. That is definitely the auction date. So. But look at these. These are awesome. Look at the colors. Are you going to Just incredible. Incredible, incredible. Very, very cool. All right, we got some Pokemon here as well. We have um, Magic the Gathering. Looks like an uncut sheet as well. Right over here, CGC slabbed uncut sheet. Looks like a test print sheet of Magic. Very cool. Or these actually... No, I'm sorry. These aren't Magic the Gathering. I correct myself. These are Pokemon. They kind of have a Magic uh, vibe to them, but those are definitely Pokemon. We have another uncut sheet too here, Tyler, as well. That is gorgeous. The fact that it's a private thing. And what I love is this right here. We got some rock and roll stuff. We have um, Bruce Springsteen, born in the USA. Very cool. Platinum record there uh and then beautiful nirvana this is probably also platinum i'm sure yeah a million copies certified platinum michael michael jackson uh notes as well and then as we pan to the left here looks like we have a lot of other movie props which is awesome. So we have, see, this is just, this is cool. But I think it's, it's, it's interesting, like where the hobby's going, right? This is very focused, this booth on pop culture items and entertainment items. Um, so just, just awesome stuff. We even have over here. 
We have more uh, Power Rangers stuff, like figurines. We have some slabs from the Power Rangers, too, which is great. We have Wizard of Oz. We have the red ruby slippers, and we have the uh, the witch, the, the Wicked Witch's hat. That's so cool. Um, and then more pop culture. If you span over here, Tyler, we have figurines as well. So this is from 1985, these figurines. Superman, the Joker. We have Star Wars as well. Uh, these are from 1978. So these are probably the original, right? They have to be. Original Kenner um, toys from 1978 and 84. Just very, very cool stuff. Alright everybody, this is the end of day two of the national. A lot happened today. A lot happened. We interviewed Dave from Golden Auction. We interviewed Ken from Golden Auctions and found out how Ken kind of started in this industry, being players and stuff. Awesome. Uh, we met with Gary V. Had some great time with Gary V. Tyler even uh, got a moment with Gary V, which is a really cool guy. Uh, pristine auction, some great things happening there. Heritage auction, some great things happening there. We are in the, the Ludex Lounge right now. Uh, Rain night is about to happen in a couple hours, and we're going to bring you content like that. That will come tomorrow. All right, everybody. So until tomorrow, have a good night. We'll see you tomorrow, day three.